Bon matin. It's a pleasure to be in La Belle Provence in the company of great mining companies and great hockey players. I am Michael Rowley, CEO of Group 10 Metals. Group 10 is a uh, growth stage company. We are pre-resource. Uh, however, as you'll see as we get into the presentation here, that we expect to quickly move uh, known mineralized zones on our Stillwater project um, to our uh, maiden inferred resources. Um, we'll get into that here. It's an exciting time for the company following our 2019 drill program. We were accumulating, consolidating uh, quality land positions through the bear market cycle. We, uh, the most recent acquisition, our Stillwater West project from 2017. It's an unusual land position for a junior to have. We have essentially half of the Stillwater district. We adjoin the Stillwater mines, the highest grade producing palladium platinum mines in the world. Um, and that will be the, the focus of our discussions today. However, before that, we secured the Black Lake Drayton project in Ontario, uh, 30 kilometers of strike, 127 holes in the database. This adjoins Treasury Metals Goliath project and um, First Mining's uh, Goldland project. Very attractive district. We continue to have good uh, expressions of interest in that project and we'll move it along into the right hands at the right time for the benefit of our shareholders. In the Yukon, as of about 2015, we were consolidating the largest land position in the Kluwani Belt, and this is adjoining the Well Green Deposit, which is one of the largest uh, undeveloped uh, platinum group nickel copper projects in the world. We did an attractive deal on one part of that project in July of this year, and we look forward to doing more deals of that type. Overall, the strategy has been to accumulate 100% interests in these assets. Um, that changed a bit with the acquisition of the Stillwater project as it quickly became our flagship. Each of these assets has the ability, the, the scale and the potential to attract the interest of a major and uh, we've certainly seen that on the Stillwater project. It's worth noting too that there aren't many companies uh, in the platinum group nickel copper space um, especially quality ones outside of um, South Africa and Russia. And there's been some interesting movement in that space um, with Sabanye buying our neighbor, the Stillwater Mines, in 2017. And then again recently with uh, Impala Platinum buying uh, North American Palladium for a billion dollars. So we expect that trend to continue. We have an excellent management team, um, well-rounded and very familiar with operating juniors promoting and raising real capital. Uh, Greg Johnson, in particular, our chair, saw Nova Gold. He was a co-founder of Nova Gold. He saw that from 10 cents a share up to 2 billion in market cap. Myself, I've been in the industry since 1990 and in exploration since about 2002, and I'm a founder of Group 10. Based on the quality of our assets, we've been able to attract a truly world-class technical team. Dr. Craig Bow at top left there uh, is our chief geologist. He was underground at Stillwater in the 1980s. He's an expert in these layered magmatic systems. He's been all over the world with them. And then uh, significantly, we were able to bring Dr. Broughton in from Ivanhoe as an advisor. And of course, he's credited as co-discoverer of their Platte Reef mine in South Africa. And as you'll see in our presentation here, that's our, our main parallel is that Platte Reef district of South Africa. We've also brought in key members of some of the juniors that were there before us and gave us a lot of our database. Uh, Justin Madru is the vendor of the project. He's our geophysicist. He staked the ground initially. And Mike Austinson was the QP uh, who oversaw the 12,000 meters of core that we now have in our possession. So. Um, that's very uh, useful as that is no longer historic core as we remodel it with these new models from South Africa in mind. <clears throat> these are polymetallic targets. Um, they're nickel copper sulfide systems that are enriched in platinum, palladium, rhodium, and cobalt and gold. Um, we, uh, palladium, of course, is a darling of the market. It's at $1,770 an ounce today. That's expected to continue based on supply deficits. Platinum, we expect uh, it's, it's over 900 bucks and moving up. Uh, we expect that will continue. 
uh, due primarily to the closure of some of these reef type mines in South Africa and the loss of supply there. Uh, nickel is uh, doing very nicely in the past few months and we expect that to continue based on demand from the, the energy storage industry. And at Stillwater in particular, cobalt and copper and gold provide a nice, uh, and rhodium actually provide nice uh, additional co-product values. That's our land position. So we're in yellow. Uh, we're above Sabanier Stillwater with the picket pin deposit. And our focus is that main block there in yellow. Uh, we have, we're the only other significant holder in the district, which is a remarkable position for a junior to be in. Our neighbor in gray was bought, uh, the Stillwater mines were bought by Sabanier in 2017 for $2.2 .2 billion. Just as we were completing this acquisition, we actually hustled the staking on the ground knowing that they were coming. Um, and we've expanded the claim position since. It's worth noting the 25 kilometer span of the claim block here. This is a very large position. They, uh, the world's highest grade platinum group deposit is that thin line there. It's a reef type deposit. It's about a meter, two meters thick. It spans tens of miles. Um, it is 80 million ounces at 16 grams per ton palladium and platinum. It's palladium rich, which is timely. And there are three mines producing. Uh, the Stillwater mine was opened in 1986, the, the East Boulder in 2002, and the Blitz mine in 2017. So this is mining friendly country. Um, and there's good road, as you can see, good access. A quick look at what these layered magmatic systems look like. Um, Bushfeld complex in South Africa and Stillwater are, are closely related. They're very similar systems. And they occur when these layers of metal rich magma are laid down layer upon layer um, over time. In the green part up here, the layers are particularly defined. Um, and it's interesting that at the Bushfeld, the producing reefs, the Marinsky and UG2, are directly uh, parallel to that JM reef in Stillwater in those upper layers. And that's all at about 2.25 kilometers or something up these massive complexes. Um, it changes in the north limb of the Bushveld, and you get this Platte Reef district. And in the lower portions there, you get these giant mines. There's 400 million ounces total platinum group in the Platte Reef. Uh, tens of billions of pounds of copper and nickel. Uh, the Mahalaquena mine is the producing mine in that district, 265 million ounces. It's about six pits right now. And the Platte Reef mine, which adjoins that. Um, built now in construction by Ivanhoe. The smallest mine in that district is 26 million ounces, and that's Waterberg, uh, now in development by uh, Platinum Group Metals. So we are the first to bring that thinking to the Stillwater District, despite the known parallels between these systems and every indication in the database and in the, the 28,000 meters of core we have in the database. <clears throat> We've presented here for you uh, three of the five known mineralized zones that we have drill defined to date. These are bodies of uh, disseminated sulfide mineralization and they fit that Platte Reef model. They're tens to hundreds of meters thick and they have the potential for kilometers in strike. And Stillwater, the whole system has been tipped up by the mountains to the south. So it's at a very mining friendly and exploration friendly 60 degree angle. Uh, the upper layers here and you get the the narrow reef type deposits there, and then the basal zones there, which is our focus. Stillwater is currently mining right there, up to about two kilometers in depth on the JM reef deposit. That's the 80 million ounces. We have the picket pin, a known reef deposit above them in the layers. And our focus, of course, again, is that lower zone where we have these drill defined um, mineralized zones based on work to date. So what do these terms, reef and plat reef, really mean? These are some examples of real world producing deposits. Reefs are basically uh, narrow, and uh, you could think of them as being like uh, veins in that sense. They're not veins geologically, but they sort of appear like that. They tend to be quite thin, and the grades can be quite good. Um, you've got 20 
grams per ton at uh, Stillwater and uh, five and six at the Marinsky. They are um, expensive to mine, being narrow, and in South Africa, they're getting increasingly deep and hot and dangerous, and uh, closures of those mines are driving platinum prices. That's a picture of what it's like to work at the Marinsky. If reef type mines are like veins, then uh, these plat reef systems that we're focused on are like porphyries. They're big, they're disseminated, and they're amenable to bulk mining. So what we like is the widths that you get. Uh, at the flat reef, at the Mahalaquena, and at Waterberg, uh, you get these tens to hundreds of meters thick. Uh, good base metals, sort of 0.3, 0 0.4% combined copper nickel, and then a nice kicker of PGEs on top. And we're also seeing cobalt at Stillwater, which they don't generally get in the bushveld. There's a picture of the Mahalaquena mine there, one of the pits. Um, it's producing at less than 400 bucks an ounce platinum. It's been in operation since 1992, but really the geology of the Platte Reef began to be understood with Ivanhoe in the late 90s and early 2000s. So uh, part of our story at Stillwater here is the, uh, the market cycles and how the teams before us were just tagging into this stuff, this interesting stuff in the basal zones. You can even see it in press releases in 2008, but of course that was 2008 and the markets got away from them. So not much happened for a few years. Um, and we've come in, brought the database together, and we're the first to take a really systematic look for these large bulk mineable uh, systems. Quick look at soils. Uh, this is across 15 kilometers. Uh, the soils are lighting up with platinum group metals in the top image and gold, and then base metals, nickel and copper in the bottom image. Uh, it's a very powerful exploration tool for us at Stillwater. And that reflects the fact that those mineralized zones are coming to surface, as you saw in the earlier picture, based on the, the angle. Uh, it's worth noting that we just completed this year the soils across the western portion of the property. And that uh, has brought us some very nice targets for 2020. We have an enormous database, and this slide attempts to bring it all into a, a summary. We have uh, highlight drill holes presented here over conductivity across the entire 25 kilometer uh, property. So we have very high levels of conductivity shown in the purples. These are basically the highest conductors you can get. And um, what's compelling is that we know those contain copper and nickel sulfide based on the drill results, which you've got coded here in the dots. Um, as a result of this work, we've got we've isolated 14 target areas. Six of them are the higher grade reef type targets, um, as shown in red there, and that's the traditional target that the the both the Bushveld and the um, and Stillwater complex are known for. And then you've got the eight um, blue ovals there, which are our plat reef style targets, and that's the lower region where you get these these bulk mineable systems. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, Ivanhoe's 112 million ounce plat reef deposit would fit in that camp zone uh, target area there, kilometers in scale, and, um, and that's the potential that we see. So a closer look, basically the same image, but zooming in on, the, uh, on 15 kilometers and the five most advanced target areas. These are the areas where the, the drill database to date shows a sufficient density of holes and continuity of mineralization that our block model uh, is, is giving us the good basis for our first resources here. So um, we focused on three of these this year. Um, and there are five in total, as you can see here. There's a lot of information on this slide and some of the next slides, and I've put some paper copies uh, at the back of the room there. You're welcome to, to have a look after. And this is also available on the website, as are, as are all these slides. Uh, we focused on these three in terms of our drill work this year, being the Chrome Mountain um, area, 200 meters thick, 700, uh, 700 meters in strike, and only tested to a depth of 200 meters open and open into um, soil anomalies that are untested. At the camp zone, similar. Those lovely conductive highs have never been systematically tested, and yet it's already got a kilometer strike. Um, and uh, nickel grades of 0.42%, copper grades of, of 
key point is that we have very limited PGE analysis on these, and uh, a big part of our work this year has been to drill to fill in gaps in the block model at these three areas. Iron Mountain is uh, probably the most advanced to date in terms of database. Some very nice hits and good indications of size, and we'll look at that more in a cross section coming up. <clears throat> so in addition to having um, expansion potential along strike into those conductive highs, we have considerable potential at depth. This is a big primary magmatic system. It has never been systematically looked at for these targets. Um, we did a magnetic vector inversion model. This is a modern technique, quite cutting edge. It's been very successful at uh, Platte Reef in identifying extensions of their Platte Reef deposit. It's also been used very effectively at porphyry deposits. And we see kilometer scale um, uh, extensions below known mineralized zones. The, the five that we just had on the previous slide are shown in yellow there. And we see them going potentially kilometers down. Stillwater, of course, is mining up to two kilometers depth, and that's the depth we've given here. So they've pulled over 10 million ounces to date, um, just north of us here at the, uh, the East Boulder Mine, for example, one of their three. Uh, so there's, and the deepest drill holes to date are 400 meters on that and much of the database is one and 200 meter holes. So we've barely scratched the surface of this two kilometer depth potential. Next couple of slides are gonna look at those cross sections uh, up there and present the camp zone and Iron Mountain targets. <coughs> That's the camp zone. Um, this is a compilation of our work bringing together drill holes from different decades and different targets. This hole over here is quite fun. That's an, a US steel hole drilled in the 1950s. They were looking for iron formation. They found it with that green there, but they didn't find enough of it to assay the hole. They stopped when they hit copper nickel sulfide in that purple olivine cumulate. And that's kind of typical of what we're getting into. We're the first to bring this together. We've uh, offset that one and taken it deep and identified uh, new mineralized zones. We've put some core pictures on the website actually to, to flesh that out. Over here, AMAX in the 60s and 70s identified a nice 27 meter width of higher grade mineralization. That's one of our key targets and we've advanced that nicely this year as well. Iron Mountain cross section, similar, different decades, different targets of drilling and we're the ones to bring it all together. We've got some lovely long lengths um, drilled by AMAX, that hole's from 1973. It's mineralized top to bottom, 250 meters it ended in mineralization and it has a nice 27 meter uh, interval in the middle. And that's appropriate for a Platte Reef style system. 27 meters is the right scale for thickness and we've got indications that that might run kilometers. So that's confirming the potential here. We've offset uh, that hole plus another one and done a third in that area as well. And those results will be out in the coming weeks and months. Um, we also have some more recent drilling up here which provides some very good indications of platinum group content, eight meters at 3.6 grams per ton, for example. And all this information is available on the website. <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's been a big couple of years. We made the first acquisition in 2017, systematically brought the database and team together, did our first programs on the ground last year, and then this year the key step of, of doing our drill program and the objective there was both proof of concept and also to fill in this block model um, to move those known mineralized zones along towards our first inferred resources on the project. And we're excited about that. News flow will be ongoing as we get the results out, soils, rocks, and drill. Um, and then we also continue to get interest on our other assets, um, which are now to us non-core as we focus on Stillwater. It's an exciting time for the company. We have about 81 million shares out and a market cap about 13, 14 million dollars. Don't think the market has really appreciated yet what we're onto, it's a new story. Uh, we're pleased to have engaged Red Cloud in that regard just recently and uh, we will be increasingly getting the news out and uh, continuing our good work on the project. We did a raise uh, in August of 2.45 million and we have uh, warrants that are in the money and are being exercised. We've received 
over a million dollars to date in funding from those warrant exercises. So uh, our share ownership is growing nicely in terms of the institutional base. That was zero a few years ago. We've now got nice funds, good funds from um, Europe, the US and Canada on board. Management and associates have a good portion at 37% and the rest is high net worth at retail. Thank you for your time. It's an exciting time for the company and we look forward to uh, releasing results of our work.